Good morning. This is Reverend Mike Capron from the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. We're continuing our worship by conference call during the uh, COVID-19 crisis. And um, I'm recording Bible text and sermons for those who uh, couldn't, couldn't dial in. If anybody wants the number to dial in, let me know. And I'm hoping we might be uh, back in our sanctuary in a couple of weeks, but uh, we're still waiting for word about that. So I'm going to read this morning from uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? Jesus replied, how do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, says Jesus. Do this and you will live. But he who wanted to justify himself, uh, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, ooh, um, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. And then Jesus said to the expert in the law, which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Whenever I am not sure what to preach, I go back to the love commandments that Jesus gave in, in this passage. And what are the two greatest commandments? First, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind, everything you've got. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. As long as we are loving God and loving neighbor, we are probably on the right track. It's pretty straightforward, right? Unless you were a lawyer who wants to ask questions like, who is my neighbor? Give me a definition. In which case you will be treated to one of Jesus' parables about a man who is assaulted, robbed, and left bleeding by the side of the road. There are really two kinds of people in the parable. Those who, when they see someone bleeding on the side of the road, pass by, and those who stop and help, who show mercy. At the end, Jesus tells the lawyer, go and be like the second group, show mercy. Like many of you, I've spent a good part of the week looking at pictures of protests and the responses to protests. The first thing I will observe is that a lot of people are doing what Jesus said, loving their neighbor. The protests were triggered by the death of George Floyd and are often advertised under the banner of Black Lives Matter. And yet the pictures I see have lots and lots of white people and folks of other colors protesting alongside their darker skinned brothers and sisters. This morning, I spent some time looking at pictures of both white and black people that the police had shot with rubber bullets. There were some pretty horrific welts and injuries, especially the many people who will lose one of their eyes. Now, 
On the flip side of this, there have been the police who recognize that they share some of the goals with the protesters and have shown solidarity with them. And there have been protesters who have been unnecessarily violent and looters who have taken advantage to enrich themselves. But I think the scene that stands out in my mind is the one from Buffalo, where the two officers shoved the 75-year-old white man. He fell down, hit his head, and he's lying there bleeding on the pavement. And here's the moment that gets me. One of the cops sees this and seems to want to stop to help him. But the other one kind of yanks him away and they keep walking. They pass on by. This is exactly the scene Jesus describes in the parable. Someone lying there bleeding while people pass by not showing mercy. Now, I don't know anything about these two officers. I don't know their names, their backstories, what their orders were. But they failed to show the love for their neighbor that Jesus told us to show. In Luke 10, Jesus answers the question, who is my neighbor? But I think the more important question is this, what is love? And for that, I'm going to take us back to Paul's letter for the Philippians that we've been walking through. So if you want to know what love looks like, use Philippians chapter 2, that same Christ hymn that we read uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it goes like this. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not re uh, accord equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that it Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When Christ saw us lying by the side of the road, bleeding in all our sin and misery and hurt, he did not pass on by. He did not remain at a distance. Instead, he cast off all privilege, entered into our world in the form of a servant, enslaving himself to our need in a burst of passion, even to the point of suffering death on a cross. Christ became our neighbor so that he could love his neighbor, each and every one of us, each and every human person. That, my friends, is love. Love is not distant. Love is being with the one you love in solidarity with them. Now let me back up a little earlier in the text. Right before that hymn about Christ, Paul introduces it. He speaks about the attitude that Christians in the church should have about one another. It goes like this in 2 verses 1 through 5. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from his love, if any communion, or excuse me, any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Did you hear that? Same love, one in spirit, same mind. And then he summarizes with this verse, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And then he goes into the Christ hymn. I really love that. It's a deep testament to how our life together in the church can be a witness to the larger world. 
And finally, I want to speak about how we support people who are more distant from our immediate fellowship. Remember, this is Paul who wrote all this. Sometimes Paul needed the police and the authorities to protect him from angry mobs. At other times, powerful people got angry with Paul and manipulated politicians to deploy the police to arrest Paul. Sometimes he was not treated fairly under the law. He was beaten and thrown out of town. Sometimes he was treated fairly. He writes this letter to Philippi from a prison cell. And here is what he wrote back in chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, as he was reflecting on that. I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. What amazing words of courage those are. He trusts in God that whatever happens to him, Christ will be exalted. And part of the reason he believes that is because of the prayers of the church. In that same spirit, I'm going to appeal to you to be in fervent prayer for our nation. Pray for police, yes. They will show restraint and love. As a society, we need to rebuild people's faith in our justice system so that people believe they will be treated fairly. That is the quickest way to end the unrest. Give people what they want, fairness and justice, so that they can trust rather than being afraid. And pray for the protesters, that they will be safe that they can continue in peace, and that they will bring about the kind of change that Christian people can all get behind. Because protesters and people staying home really want the same thing. We want to feel safe. We want to be treated fairly to expect that we and our families can continue our lives in peace. I think the police want that too. We are really not so far apart. That is why the message of Christ has such enduring appeal. The desire for love and mercy is quite universal. Yes, our, prosper our propensity for evil is unfortunately also quite universal. That's why we need a savior. That's why we as a species must police ourselves. Power and greed are terrible temptations all through the ages. But let us Keep within us that same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Let us pray that his love would be known and that our society would be transformed. In Jesus' name, amen.